What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to teach you Law of Signs, the ambiguous case. And here's the formula that we're gonna need, and let's get started. So how do we know when we're dealing with the ambiguous case? Well, it's when we're given a triangle and we're told two sides and one of the angles that's not between the two sides. So this is sometimes abbreviated as side side angle like this, but now let's jump into a question. So question one, we have triangle ABC from before, and we're gonna find the measure of angle B to the nearest tenths place. So if we set up the formula, we have sine of angle A over side A equals sine of angle B over side B. And now we just plug in. We have sine of the measure of angle A is 38 degrees, and the measure of side A is 12 units. And just know the way we recognize side A is it's opposite of angle A. So we have sine 38 over 12 is equal to sine of B, and angle B, the measure of that angle is what we want to find. But the measure of side B is across from angle B, and that's 15 units. So now we just have to do a little bit of algebra here. We want to get the angle B by itself. So we're going to first multiply both sides by 15. And now these terms here will cancel out, and we'll have sine of angle B is equal to, and if we do 15 times this fraction, we could just put the 15 in the numerator with the sine 38 degrees. So we have 15 sine 38 degrees over 12. And now to solve for the measure of angle B, we just have to think here, what is the opposite of sine? How do we get sine to cancel? Well, the opposite of sine is sine inverse. So we're gonna do sine inverse of this entire fraction here. So we're doing sine inverse of 15 sine of 38 degrees over 12, and the rest is calculator work. So notice we're in degree mode, so we can just go ahead and type this in. I'm gonna press alpha y equals enter to pull up a fraction, and we were looking for what is, well, at first we had 15 sine 38, and divided by 12. And we said this decimal is what we're typing into sine inverse. So we could just do sine inverse, second sine of this decimal here. And I'll just scroll up to it and hit enter. And there's gonna be our angle, but just know I could have also done this, sine inverse, and type the fraction in directly like this. And notice we get the same answer, but we're gonna have 50.3 degrees. So the measure of angle B is 50.3 degrees. Now, if we stop here, we'd be walking into a very dangerous trap. We have to make sure that we consider the second possibility here, that maybe this angle here is just a reference angle. So we'll separate this into cases. In case one, we'll say the measure of angle B is what we found just here. So we have, for one, the measure of angle A is not changing. That's 38 degrees. But the measure of angle B, we found in this first case to be 50.3 degrees. So we have 50.3 degrees, and the measure of angle C since it's a triangle, there's 180 degrees in total. So if we add these two angles here, 38 plus 50.3 degrees, and subtract that from 180, we're going to get 91.7 degrees left over. Okay, so this is case one. We have these three angles. Now to explore case two, we have to consider the possibility that this angle here, 50.3 degrees, is a reference angle. So if we have a reference angle of 50.3 degrees, and we look at the quadrants here, we have A, S, TC. And this starts to explain the ambiguous case a bit. We could have the possibility here, because we're dealing with the sine function, that our angle is terminating in quadrant one, or we could have an angle that terminates in quadrant two, where sine is also positive. So if we want to find the other possible value for angle B, and this has to be explored, we could treat this as a reference angle in quadrant two, and we could do 180 degrees minus 50.3 degrees and in the second case, this would work out to 129.7. But before we say this is our second possibility for the measure of angle B, we have to make sure the other two angles check out. So what we mean by that, we had the measure of angle A, that's not changing, that's equal to 38 degrees. But now, if we look at the measure of angle C in case two, we could add 129.7 plus 38 and subtract that from 180. So we're doing 180 minus the sum of 129.7 plus 38, and if we work this out, this tells us the measure of angle C in case two is 12.3 degrees. So notice we have three possible angles in case two as well. So the measure of angle B, we'll write our answer out formally here, is either 50.3 degrees, or we could say here we had 129.7 degrees. Now just to make sure this concept really makes sense, if we look at these two triangles here based on our answers from before, Notice these two triangles have the same angle side-side combination of 38 degrees, 15, and then 12. 
And it's clearly obvious here based on these drawings that these two triangles are not congruent. So that's why we have to explore the possibility of a second triangle. So let's take a look at this question now. We have triangle ABC, so let's draw this out. We have triangle ABC, and we're told the measure of angle A is 27 degrees. So let's just label that over here. We have the measure of side A, which is opposite of angle A, is 18 units, and the measure of side B, opposite of angle B, is 11 units. And we need to find the measure of angle B to the nearest degree. So we're setting this up in a very similar way. We're gonna have sine of the 27 degree angle and we're gonna say over 18, because notice it's opposite of this side that's 18 units long, is equal to, we have sine of angle B over side B is 11 units long. So now when we go to solve for the measure of angle B, there's a few ways we could go forward with this here, but we have 11 times sine of 27 degrees equals 18 times sine of B, and now just divide both sides by 18. And that's going to get sine of B by itself. So we have sine of B equals 11 sine of 27 degrees over 18. And now this part is just calculator work, but we already showed how to do that part before. So this, I'll just leave this uh, up to you. But we have the measure of angle B equals sine inverse. That's how we're going to get rid of the sine function. We do sine inverse of this ratio, 11 sine of 27 degrees over 18. And now make sure you're in degree mode when you type this in, but you should get the measure of angle B in this case here is 16.1 degrees. So we have 16.1 degrees and that's the measure of angle B. So now if we write out everything, we have the measure of angle A equals, we have 27 degrees. The measure of angle B is 16.1 degrees. So now to find the measure of angle C in case one, we're gonna subtract the sum of angle A and B from 180. So we have 180 degrees minus 27 degrees plus 16.1 degrees. And if we do that subtraction here, the measure of angle C is gonna be equal to 136.9 degrees. But now let's explore the possibility of a second case. What if the measure of angle B is our reference angle? Because once again, sine is positive in both quadrants one and two, so we have to check the possibility of having an answer that's bigger than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we'll say the measure of angle B in case two is gonna be equal to 180 degrees minus the first possibility, which was 16.1 degrees. And if we work this out here, this would tell us the measure of angle B would be 163.9 degrees. But the problem with this measure for angle B is before we were told that the measure of angle A was 27 degrees. So what's the problem with that? Well, if we add 163.9 degrees plus 27 degrees, and let's just fix that up, so we have plus 27 degrees. If we add these two together, notice we're going to get an answer that's greater than 180 degrees. And since we're dealing with a triangle here, we can't have an angle sum that goes past 180 degrees. So we could say here that a second triangle is not possible. So now let's write our answer out formally. We have the measure of angle B. And the question originally said to round to the nearest degree. So at this point, we'll say the measure of angle B will take 16.1 around to the nearest degree. So the measure of angle B will say is 16 degrees.